This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today's topic is procurement woes. And many of you out there can understand procurement and, and government and the role the government plays in safeguarding our monies and spending it wisely because most of the money that they have is taxpayers' money. So we're going to talk about in length to, uh, to flesh out some of the things that happen in a very unique situation here. We had one contractor to recently default on many contracts, contracts within the county of uh, Hawaii, uh, con contracts with the city and county of Honolulu, upwards of five or six, and there's even more now that we're, as we go in a small time period. So we're going to talk about that, and uh, so hold on, hold on to your purses here uh, and your purse strings because we have some waste going on that we're all suspicious of and concerned with. And when I say waste, whether it's intentional or not, but it's poor management. So what is this all about? Specifically, uh, there is a solar building as part of a consent decree being built at uh, Camel Industrial Park at the H Power facility owned by the city and county of Honolulu. This H Power, as you see this picture here, is the actual building that has been structured. And but the contractor PSI Performance Systems Inc. defaulted on this building, uh, erecting this building and completing it. So the city uh, never spoke one word to the public. We couldn't find any documents saying that they were defaulted or anything. So this project cost some $9 million. Now, what does that mean? The contractor, PSI, defaulted on this particular contract, but at the same time, he defaulted on others, pretty much. And so the city, and one of the things that we'll tell you that it's one thing that if we don't know, but when we begin to ask questions, uh, it is very, they're tight mouthed and tight fisted, the city is, not wanting to provide these documents. And what you see here is the second picture here is a uh, facility called the Kehi Transfer Station. The Kehi Transfer Station sits at Middle Street in Nimitz. And if you look closely, you'll see the symbol PSI, a sticker on the piece of equipment there. That was an excavator to be used. And we'll go into greater details as to uh, what was to be done at each job site. But again, $9.7 million, uh, million dollars estimated uh, for that one contract at H-Power. Another possibly 2 to $3 million at Kehi Transfer Station. So you can imagine, see it's starting to add up. And um, Kehi Transfer Station was one million, the estimated cost was $1,500,000 for that particular project. And uh, it, something's just kind of strange about the whole thing that why would the city and county of Honolulu allow for a person to get as many con contracts and they say that they vetted him and he's complying with all of the rules and participating in bidding but something's wrong here we didn't hear anything and how could one person get several contracts as we will point out later on as we go the other one was at Kuhel uh, Street and that Kuhel Street was uh, up in Palolo the original bidder was two million eight hundred and seventy three thousand but that person pulled out once they won the bid and the city then for some reason gave the business or the contract to performance system inc because it was the second lowest bidder of three million four hundred and fifty seven thousand nine hundred one dollars so this folks you don't ever want to be caught in a predicament as the people at Kuhea and Waimao Street. Uh, you just don't, as we'll go through and show you. The streets are collapsing, potholes, sinkholes along the street. Many of the citizens there and homeowners there think that the sinkhole is attributed to the sewage water flowing underneath and eroding away. The city has a different uh, saying that it's slippage 
and geological uh, slippage that's occurring. This house here is, uh, uh, is about to fall over and the foundation has split. The walls are tilted. And why would the city and county of Honolulu award a contract if you have a slipping hill that is basically in motion? So is it good use of our money? Should they fix the problem, the sliding of the hill or condemn that area? Why would you spend $3 million on a slope that you know is moving and that you know is uh, eroding away and you just continue to hand out money and then that party that originally gets the contract withdraw, declines, and then is handed to PSI who in turn defaults on it. So I, I can understand this situation where he would default in this case because you have a mountain and some of the pictures will show the sidewalks, the water, the storm drains are busting up, breaking due to the tension. And there's actually monitors there, uh, geological monitors or sensors to determine and measure the movement. You have water bubbling out of the middle of the street and flowing down and flowing under houses and washing out walls. And uh, the city elected to continue to go ahead and pay for that, uh, that contract. It probably would have been one of the worst waste of money that you could possibly imagine because if the hill slide is sloping and slipping and eroding away, why would you pave the road? You would think more so human safety, the safety of the people, maybe consider condemning it or doing something or finding the cause. But there is a many a lawsuits uh, that's flying back and forth up there now, and unfortunately, the homeowners like you or myself are suffering from uh, having to fight now the city. The other contract was Uwalu Wastewater Pump Station in Wahiwa, owned by the city and county of Honolulu. And that contract was for 2.4 million to 2.7 million. It was awarded to PSI. PSI defaulted on this contract. And what was supposed to take place at this site is this building, the cement, the asphalt, all of that was to be demolished and rid of, hauled away in a new building placed there with new driveways and what have you. But the city, again, it, it takes lots of money to plan these things. So we are paying city workers to plan, draw plans, address these issues, get the money allocated put out the bids, hand it to, and get a winning bid, and then it goes into default. What happened to all that work that exists? If you were a contractor, and would you come on the tail of a, another contractor who has started the work or didn't start the work or what have you, would you accept the responsibility or the liability of the earlier contractor's work? So that puts the city in a dilemma, and the city, apparently, uh, the, what we find is really not addressing that and the difficulty in getting information. Now, we've gone to Budget and Fiscal Services, and they did, in fact, provide documents. But when asking questions of the Environmental Services and others, uh, they refused to respond to in writing questions or anything. We did res receive responses from the city uh, as well as the state on a few questions, but the main question that we wanted to ask, they wouldn't answer and have no part in talking or discussing it. Uh, I understand things are in litigation, but uh, we want to see the documents leading up to, how did you vet this person? We also have some concerns. These concerns based on the number of contracts and how they were awarded uh, we would like to see if they were consistent with the laws and procurement laws and rules of the city and county of Honolulu and the state. The Uwalu site uh, should have been all of that removed by now, but it was not. And the taxpayer, once again, work is not being done. Uh, it's stalled. Now it has to go back through the process, deal with the bonding agencies and the surety companies as well as the new contractors are finding one that's suitable. So it, it, the people's business is not getting done. That is a big problem.
The other one is the fire department at Waipahu, the maintenance yard, facility maintenance or automobile or fire maintenance facility. There was a contract there. The actual contract, the estimated cost would have been $800,000. The basic bid was $484,927, and that was won by Performance System Inc. So something unique here and caught our eye in that the second bidder, Raf Essinoye, bid at $840,000, $40,000 higher than the estimated cost that the city has, but the PSI bid at some four, nearly $400,000 less than the estimated amount. So we hope to look at this more and deeper and dig deeper and find out how could one party get so many contracts, how could they be vetted, and then in turn default in such a fashion, leaving all of the city work undone and exposing the taxpayers to a higher cost and loss of revenues. Now, I'm not here to defend businesses, local businesses or anything, but there are certain laws that require you to use Hawaii-made products in some of these contracts. Now, did they get done? Well, some did. In this process of defaulting, I'm looking at a, a, a letter from a, one of the people, vendors that provided a service to the contractor on uh, K K transfer station, hauling dirt, bringing gravel, trucking, and what have you. That party had to file a legal action, and I understand now he did recover. But what about the other vendors that are hired by or subcontracted by PSI, let's say, who defaulted. How are the, uh, is, is the city exposing these companies, local companies, to this kind of work? Where is the oversight? We didn't find much of oversight in this, especially when you have this number of defaults. And um, this, this document here is from Travelers. Uh, you can't see much of it, but uh, what this is, it's the first step in, in identifying that there's default, notifying the city. Many of these cases, the city had no knowledge. They, they claim, we understand, that they were working on it. But uh, we look at the documents, we don't see any real action to, in a hurried manner to understand why and how is it possible that this company can get this number of contracts at one time, basically, and he has federal contracts as well, and the performance of those. So we're going to talk more extensively about uh, what is going on with these contracts, and we're going to take a little trip to the Big Island because there, too, was a contract worth some $16 million, as we were told by the city and county of Hawaii, and the, an estimate of six, between $16 million or maybe a little more. But we don't have the specific facts. We made a request for that. So what does that mean? There's a lot of moolah just floating in the air around here. And so you default on a $16 million contract on the Big Island, and then you, we understand that there are another agency within the city and county of Honolulu, but also a state agency, and we'll talk about that. Uh, this is Eyes on Hawaii. I'm Carol Cox, your host. We'll be back in a minute. We'll take a break. Aloha. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king. Come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You could talk to God. Go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You can break rocks. You can be a master. Don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Stay in the hall of
your grandmother. What big eyes you have, she said. What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push! Oh! Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox, on the thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to go and listen to some of the shows or view some of the shows or send an email, go to j, for j at thinktechhawaii.com, and uh, you can catch all of the shows and many other hosts that are um, hosting shows. They're really great subjects, so, and thank you for joining Eyes on Hawaii with me. Again, we we're talking about, or I'm talking about procurement and waste of money, taxpayers' money, not just any money, but taxpayers' money. And this is the city and county of Honolulu we were talking about, granting grants, uh, uh, contracts to a contractor who defaulted on at least five city contracts in the basic same period of time. So not only did the city and county of Honolulu get uh, the sting of default, uh, the state of Hawaii did also. The Ma'i Apalaoa Bridge in Miley. This is a scene, an aerial shot we shot. Uh, the, the bridge is a low-level bridge over the stream there at Miley. And uh, the conditions are horrendous. Uh, I personally walked and photographed the entire bridge underneath, over it, and what have you, and it's, it does not appear safe. And in reading some of the documents and studies that this bridge is vulnerable. And when you look at the amount of traffic, more than 30,000 cars uh, that transit that within a day or so, they say, or a week or what have you. But it's substantial. But when you look at the structure of the bridge, as well as the, the concrete spalding, the exposed rebar, uh, this contractor, PSI, accepted the contract, bid it, won it, and proceeded to build a staging ground. The staging ground consists of two containers, two trailers, and a black cloth to keep from runoff. But this is, give you an example, you see this bus, the city bus, traveling over this bridge. And, then, and this bridge, mind you, is the Mai Palao Bridge. And this bridge, in my opinion, in my observation, is not safe. And the tide, the high sand, and what have you. But $16 million, he walked away. So I have a statement here from the State Department of Transportation, Mr. Tim Sakahara. And then thank you for the opportunity to respond to your inquiry. Performance Systems Inc. notified HDOT March 29, 2017, that it would not be able to complete the Ma, Ma Pala or Bridge improvement project. Prior to its selection of the bidding process, the company was verified to be in good standings. That could be, but it's apparently some, it suffered some incident or some activities that caused it to not deliver the work, causing the people's business to be put on hold and then causing probably, more than likely, a greater expense. Moving forward, the surety company will be responsible for the completion of the project under the specification and satisfaction of the state per contract agreement. The surety company is 100% bound by statute, re regulations, contract language, including the case of default, and we're confident the matter will be resolved. Get this. The project is a 5% complete which is approximately $760,000. The work performed on the project included mobilization, setup, protection of the staging area. While the improvement project is necessary, the structure is inspected at least every other year and is safe. Well, I don't accept that as being fact because if you can't control the dollars and the flow of dollars, how can you deal with something you don't know the real structure? And when you see the structure, how horrendous it is, uh, you don't know. A footnote, we tried to reach out to Senator Miley Shimabukuro, who was in that area, and uh, 
we didn't get a response back. But as early as July, or recently as July uh, 27th or 17th, uh, she was writing and talking about the progress of the bridge in its place when, in fact, there's a default notice in March. Did she know that? Did she not know that? If she didn't know it, why not? If she did know it, why didn't she disclose it to the public? So there's a lot of questionable behavior as it relates to occurring, as it relates to the use of public money, the guarding of pro pro public money, and the protection and the proper spending. We need these jobs done in a timely fashion. We need vetting, better vetting of the contractors. And when you can't detect if a person is overextending themselves, when you default on a city project at Camel Industrial Park at $9 million, another three here and a three there and a two here, the city should be concerned. And there should be an emergency action or something to call into play. Now, this $760,000, I'm informed, was paid to the contract, the PSI. If you go there and see for the setup, for the work that was complete, as I said, there's two trailers, there's black cloth to control the dust, there's gravel that was brought in by truck, there's runoff, there's black uh, better management sausages that you place around property, the perimeter, and that was it. That person then can claim that as 5%. Now, I didn't mention that this was a, a non, uh, a Native American corporation, not a Native American uh, minority corporation who won an award. Something's wrong here. I'm all for getting the job done and, and giving fairness to competition. But if you demonstrate that you can't do the job, and we're talking millions and millions of dollars at stake here, and the interests of the public and exposing the public to safety concerns and danger, uh, I don't think we should tolerate that at any cost. A minority business, uh, and this person also won an award for being the minority business. I'm not speaking ill of the minority business program because it's trying to right some of the wrongs. But don't right the wrong to a point where it's off kilter, where we are exposed to loss of revenues, loss of monies, and dangerous conditions on the roadways. It's just not logical. So talking about using local businesses and local resources, these two trailers now, I make a phone call to the company that rented or delivered the trailers to PSI, and I inquired as to who owned the trailers. They said they did, and they expressed concern that they had not been paid. So that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. You go in and you do 5% of the work, and that 5%, I don't know if it constitutes 5%, but we'll accept what the states say. And then in turn, accept that. But when vendors are harmed or caused to lose money or caused to have to fight for the money they're rightfully owed from these contractors, then something is wrong. We need to review the procurement process. We need to step up and have better monitoring and management and oversight. Maybe they do. Maybe they dropped the ball on this one. That's the big question. Why was the ball dropped on this one if there is anybody willing to play ball? That's the problem. We are pretty much exposed to loss of revenues, again, exposed to danger, delay in services delivered, and in turn, higher costs at the tax box when it comes, when you open your mailbox. It just does not seem that the taxes are going down. And this might be yet another example of the waste, fraud, and abuse that we also are so concerned about or fear that is prevalent or prominent in our culture here in Honolulu. We should think, rethink this. The mayor, the city council need to revisit this. This is a biggie. To default in such a fashion with so many contracts is not to be taken lightly.
and it does not speak well for the procurement process or the monitoring or the oversight or the management on the part of the administration. So on the Big Island, I told you they too lost a, a bit of money or time in the area. So here's a press release from Mayor Harry Kim and it, the headlines, contractor for aeration sludge removal at Keala Kehe transfer uh, defaults. The contract in charge of the project to provide aeration pump upgrades and sludge removal at the Keala Kehe wastewater treatment plant has defaulted and dredging of the facility sludge ponds has come to a temporary halt according to the Department of Environmental Management. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But again, this is suggesting that our procurement system or the people that is managing it or handing out or doling out our monies does not have our best interests at hand. It's not monitoring it. It's not policing it. And we need to do better. I'm not preaching. I'm attempting to teach. We can do better. We know we can. The, the monitor's in place. We're paying people to do it. So how is it that, again, one person can have five contracts or more to default? And just in the city and the state. And by the way, the bridge is still sitting there. Uh, traffic is transferring over it, and that is it. So, again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii. It's always a pleasure bringing you something of this sort in nature and, and enlightening you as well as myself as to the loss and the cost and what can we do better. So let's ask our mayor, our governor, our city council, our state representatives to do better. Let's come up with stricter laws and monitoring and avoid the waste and fight the waste that we witness here and the fraud. I believe it's fraudulent that we would be led on to believe that things are happening when they're not happening. So that's about it, and thank you. Um, my executive director, Jay Fidel, technical support from Robert uh, McLean and Ray Singleton and Nick Sexton. This is Eyes on Hawaii. Thank you. I'm your host, Carol Cox. See you in two weeks. Aloha.